this time we'll be talking about understanding the relationship between economic growth and income uh, inequality. While we're having this topic, I mean, considering the state of the nation right now, wouldn't you see this is topical? Of course. Now, before I introduce our guest analyst to you, a little bit of background yeah, to this particular topic. Now, income inequality refers to the on equal distribution of income among individuals or households within a population. Now, it occurs when a small portion uh, of the population earns a disproportionate and large share of the total income, while the majority earns a smaller share. Now, this can lead to a wide gap between the rich and the poor, making it difficult for those at the lower end of the income spectrum to meet their basic needs. Now, access quality education and health care and enjoy a decent standard of living. Uh, inequality can be caused by various factors, including differences in education, skills, and job opportunities, as well as discriminatory practices and policies. It can also be perpetuated by tax policies that favor the wealthy and lack of access to affordable health care and education, and of course, limited social mobility. Now, the effects of income inequality can be far-reaching, including reduced economic growth, like eating once in a day, or, or not having what you need to buy a house when you need to increase poverty and crime rates and a decreased social cohesion. Addressing income inequality requires a comprehensive approach that includes policies and programs aimed at promoting uh, equal access to education and job opportunities, uh, progressive taxation and social safety nets. Now, like I said earlier on, we are talking about understanding the relationship between economic growth and income inequality. Our guest today is Sheson Okuade. He is a public affairs analyst. Good morning, Sheson. It's always a pleasure to have you on the show. Uh, good morning to you, uh, Olumide, and uh, my sister. Pardon me, I missed uh, yes. the name. Yes, it's Vivian. It's Vivian. Okay, morning. good morning, Vivian and Olumide, yes. and uh, good morning to all our viewers across the globe. All right. Let so me say thank you for Friday. Yes, it's, <laughs> we are thanking God it's Friday, really. So uh, my first question to you is this. What is the current state of income inequality in our country, and how does it impact economic growth? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, from your preamble, you've actually given our viewers an insight into what uh, economic growth and inequality should be. Uh, ordinarily, economic growth should potentially, uh, uh, you know, close the gap, you know, reduce poverty and give citizens sense of belonging uh, that they are there. But when you look at uh, developing countries like ours, uh, you discover that economic growth rather creates uh, enough gap uh, between the uh, rich and the poor, and the gap keeps you know widening because of failures of system and uh, the greedy nature of those that actually leaders consider as our leaders. Currently, I can tell you that the uh, level of inequality uh, it, it's beyond the Pareto rule that we call 80-20. I can even tell you that it's as high as 90-10 now because when you look at an average uh, low income earner, uh, what they earn from the share that we have compared to what the uh, I and mighty are actually taking, them, you discover that the disparity is uh, just too wide. See, this inequality has actually... Uh, 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 metamorphosed into what we call the EUs that we are faced with now, uh, increasing the level of insecurity, uh, increasing the uh, uh, debt rates. Uh, I'm sure you and I understand that the failure of our health system has actually put serious pressure on every uh, low-income earner of accessing quality uh, health care. When you look in terms of education, uh, I, I, I was reading something yesterday of the current cost of uh, tuition fee of some tertiary institution 
I don't want to go to the <laughs> primary and the secondary. Mm -hmm. uh, you look at uh, the loan that the government promised to even give uh, to the students in comparison to the fee that they are supposed to pay. And you, you consider <laughs> the five wire range among it, not to talk of uh, a common man like you and I sending our children to school. I'm made proud to say uh, that people like us, you know, when things were going the right way it should be in the 70s, we attended public school. And people still find it difficult to balance that people like us attended proper public school. And that's why we always give kudos to the likes of Babaja Conde in Lagos State, because free education was indeed free education. How many people have access to this private uh, education that we are all paying through our nose? You imagine a child of uh, two, three years that is still in pre nursery uh, paying millions, you know, uh, per session. And you ask, what are, exactly are they teaching them? <laughs> all because the mother needs to be. So you can see the disparity when it comes to this level of inequality. The basic thing that people need to even have access to without. Uh, stressing so much, are really not even available to it. Let's break the comment back with the current increase in the price of fuel this day. Yeah. You can ask me. <laughs> then the access to transportation. Uh, I was laughing with my wife this morning that I think we need to resort back to the old school of doing things. Go and buy bicycle, <laughs> and uh, at least with that, you are not going to face VIO problem. Uh -huh. There is no need for you renewing your license. Uh, there is no need of you servicing your vehicle practically like every quarter. No mm -hmm. need to buy engine or a DA. There is no engine to even service them. <laughs> so it, it tells you the disparity uh, that we cannot even have access to quality education. We can have access to good health. We can have access to transportation. And you know the impact of transportation on the livelihood of everyone. That is the means of even moving those goods and services that are required by you and I uh, to even survive as a nation. So currently in the country, the gap, uh, you know, the inequality between the have and the have not is really, really wide that we, you keep asking yourself, a minimum wage that is even being approved, though we had, we are not civil servants. Some of us have asked that those things were meant for them. But the civil servants themselves are even crying that they not even have access to that money, except for a few states that were actually paying, that was paying that funds before it was approved as minimum wage. Some states are not even keying into it. So you ask yourself, everything keeps going up. And you know, when your expenses is on the high side and the income is not increasing, definitely the means of survival will become a threat. And that is leading to so much ills that we're seeing, robbery, stealing, terrorism, banditry, keep increasing because uh, an I do ants is devil's workshop. A lot of organization are actually, you know, uh, are retrenching rather than, you know, increasing uh, the, the staff strength. They are reducing because the uh, cost of operation is becoming unbearable. Uh, even having access to loan to carry out certain things is really not there. So, Vivian, if you ask me, I can tell you for free that uh, before now people can talk about uh, the Pareto rule of 80-20, but I think it's 95 to 5 percent uh, when you ask me on the part of the have and the have not uh, in, in our country as we speak. Very well said. All right, thank you very much. Now, uh, can you explain the concept of the trickle-down effects and its relationship to economic growth and income inequality. Yeah, when you talk about the trickle effect, you see, let, let me just show the analogy of the three of us here. Mm. Uh, I, I can tell you for free, Olumide, you have dependence on you. Vivian, you have dependence on you. Uh, same myself at mm. our level. Mm. Uh, you see, before now, we used to have the elites. You have, used to have the middle class, mm. and you have those that are below the bread. But I can tell you that uh, to really affirm the inequality gap, we have collapsed the middle level. Nothing like middle. It's either you are rich or you are poor. That is the level at which we are now. And if Olumide before now, let me let me use you hypothetically, mm. uh, you are earning let's say hundred thousand, mm. and you have dependence on you mm. uh, that you give trickles, you know, maybe daddy, mommy, your siblings and the likes that you need to share to. Mm -hmm. When you, the fuel was around 187, you have some savings that you can actually give up. Mm -hmm. But as a tease, you don't even have, the, 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 your income is not sustaining you. 
please, how do you intend to share what is not sustaining you with other people? So economy, you might, you might agree that the government might come to tell you that we are having economic growth because I learned from the last uh, uh, MBS uh, statistics that our GDP is growing. <laughs> But you ask, is that the reality? Mm. The strength of your the purchasing power of uh, an individual as a speaker suddenly gets to negative. Mm. So the trickle effect of it is that if you, that people are looking up to, cannot even sustain yourself, how do you, on your part, get to that other area? And you see, one interesting thing that is really happening, which I feel our, our, our leaders need to uh, look into, is rather than them investing back in this country, we move some of the so-called funds uh, out of the country to develop other clients. Mm. See, uh, I will tell in the view that nobody is supporting corruption, but give it to people like Dan Gote, who we choose to invest in this yeah. nation. When you build factories, when you build, you know, uh, 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 organization, uh, what you are actually creating is employment that will actually allow other people to have, you know, at least a little share of the national income that we are talking about. Mm -hmm. But situation where you just get the money, you move it out to go and fix it somewhere. Even if you fix locally in the financial institution, you are not helping the economy. It is when you create the uh, environment for people to actually plug in for productivity. That's when you are growing the economy. And that's when you can reduce the inequality that you're talking about. If you are empowered, you can imagine if you of us here are empowered to the extent that I can, you know, sacrifice to give maybe my siblings a yeah, few funds to carry out. They can go ahead and be doing small business like maybe selling recharge cards, mm -hmm. you know, doing it, uh, the, this uh, POS transfer, you know, mobilize, and they'll get little, little income. But situation where you, that they are dependent on, you are even struggling to survive. Mm -hmm. How do you consider those that are lower decade? And that's the problem we are faced with. Why we feel that the uh, leaders need to address the level of investing some of the funds that they claim. If our uh, if, uh, leaders, senatorial leaders, uh, people at the National Assembly are uh, high up there, uh, with the humongous amount, rather than giving them this food, teach them how to, uh, you know, get the food by creating. But what we have seen is that the fear of what an average person is doing in government will not allow them to even invest. Because they will tell you, ah, if I do this now, because they know I'm a politician, they will eat the company up because uh, you have actually, you are not putting up a system one, and you have created a notion before now of feeding them and not allowing them to work. And that's the problem we are faced with. And that's why we have asked the government to look for a way to bridge back, you know, the middle level in such a way that that can bridge the gap between uh, the, the elites and those that are below the ladder. Uh, for us to actually tap of the resources that we are blessed with. I always tell everyone that care to listen, this country is blessed with uh, natural resources that you can talk of, is blessed with human capital, is blessed with intellectual that you can speak of. Go to the developed, uh, developed country and look at the people at the back end that are making things happening. Uh, there are people from this climb, the black race, yeah. that people are actually ridiculing, are the one behind the scene making things to work. What is actually the difference between this? It's because there's a system that works in those developed climbs. They developed it over time, and people believed in it. You know, that enough, you know, close the trust gap to have confidence in their leader. But on this far part, the leaders have not shown that sense of confidence for people to build the trust in them. And that's why I would just say practically from what we've seen, uh, we moved from 187 Naira for fuel to 500, asking that we remove subsidy. It came up at the time, and we heard that the landing cost of that particular product, as said by the Minister of State for Oil, was about 1,112 Naira, and they were still selling at uh, 568. And we were told that nobody is paying for subsidy. So we heard that it is no longer subsidy, but short for. And some of us were saying that, okay, at the time, we will start, we, we start using, you know, semantics yeah. to start the saving ourselves. What is subsidy? What is short for? What is augmenting fee? You cannot just, and all of a sudden, uh, when we have our own coming up to produce it, uh, we, we said it is not in the hands of the government to fix mm -hmm. the price. But somebody fixed this thing. 
to 568 at the time. Even the so-called 800 and I just something, somebody fixed it. So you discover that this inconsistency in government policy we not encourage even businesses to grow. Mm -hmm. So you slept last night and you woke up this morning to be buying fuel at 1,000. So if you have given quotation or LPOs to your client mm -hmm. and uh, you are expecting delivery of such thing, how do you make those businesses to grow? So you know, let me come in here. Yeah, let me come in yeah. here, Sheson, because we're trying to wrap up. Uh, you know, you talked about uh, earlier on how Nigerians are blessed and how they are doing great things outside the country. You just re echoed the thoughts of one of our colors from Ebony. Uh, but, you know, on the papers this morning, front pages of the papers, uh, the MBA said that the government's policies are impoverishing Nigerians. We also have businesses that have been decrying multiple taxation. Please, in a minute, how do tax policies influence income inequality? And what reforms do you think could help reduce the gap? Yeah, well, uh, the government, the, this administration, while well, they came in last year, did something that is noble. Or some of us are actually uh, having the other thought because after one year, we are not seeing so much impact. Uh, he set up a fiscal uh, 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 po uh, committee headed by Taiwo Yodele, and part of the focal thing that we are actually concentrating on was the aspect of reducing this multiple taxation uh, that every businesses are facing. Uh, up till now, we still have been that the document is being put in place. Uh, from what I heard from my friend Taiwo Yedele, they said they have actually completed the documentation, uh, documentation. They are going into the implementation stage. So let's see what becomes of it uh, you know, for the remaining part of uh, the year with the implementation of some of the so-called policy. Because uh, the head of that committee has been an advocate of saying that we should reduce the level at which we multitask people with taxation. So uh, we've, we've heard that the documentation is ready, it's been sent to the house. The government is giving them approval on the area of implementation. If that can be worked on, I, I can tell you, it will save a lot of things. You can hear from part of their report saying that they intend to even make use of the state actors in making sure that they galvanize rather than uh, local government coming, this one is coming. You, as a business owner, you have understanding of the taxes you are supposed to pay at a particular time, what the rate is like. Not every individual, you know, coming at different time to ask for different, you know, uh, uh, the same taxes, the same tax in different form with different name. Just the same way we are hearing different semantics in <laughs> yeah. terms of subsidy and shortfall. An augmentation fee. That's a safe place to land, Cheson. You've been fantastic on the show this morning. Thank you for coming.